Hey guys, it's Officer Giordano. We're out here today in Upper East Side for vlog day. I'm getting ready to catch up with Officer Frazier, who's a beat officer and has a very special person riding with him. He has an officer from PAC 124. The officer's on his third month of FTO. Now FTO is a field training officer phase. Once the officer graduates the academy, they have to ride with an experienced officer who's a field training officer. Officer Frazier has a certification to be an FTO. So today we'll be shadowing them, getting to know a little bit of the FTO process and see what a beat officer does in Upper East Side. Who do you think called? So it's probably the manager or the one manager that uh, or the uh, she's waiting at the door. So He's right here. Tell him what happened. He said he's going to look. He got upset. He's trying to let someone to come across the He's cursing her out because she said you came harassing her. He's approaching the bus stop. The mid-city limit to the truck shirt. Yeah. On Biscayne 79 by the Wendy's. 13 So the officers right now, they're going to make contact with the suspect, he caused a little bit of a commotion. They're gonna conduct their investigation, make contact with him, see what really happened, and compare both sides of the story. What happened at the CBS? What happened is, yeah, he was asking me for a crack rock. Who was asking for a crack rock? What I said was, I don't do that no more. All up and down the street. I'm like, gonna never lie to you. I, said, I was told by the worker that you were inside asking people for money. You know I was. You weren't? No. I did not say nothing to him. I don't say a little bit more. I told a little girl up here. Let's cut to the point. Apparently, this is the second time we have an encounter with you. And I dealt with you a long, a long time ago, but I dealt with you, all right? I'm talking now, so you just listen, all right? I can't have you here causing a disturbance at the plaza. So I'm giving you a fair warning because right now they have us authorized that we could ban people from the plaza. CVS is part of the plaza. Right now, you cannot come back to this plaza. At all. Write down his name on the yellow card, the, the case, case card, card, showing that he was trespassed from that location. Because if he comes back, now they can show the card and say, hey, he was trespassed, officer so-and-so and so trespassed him, and he came back and violated that, that trespass warning. We're gonna give you that yellow case card mm -hmm. with his name and all like that. Yes. And I already gave him that trespass warning. All right, guys, I'm here with Officer Frazier, lead officer. What's going on? Side. Good, good. How are you? Good, and good. Officer Kara. All right. I know you guys went to the CVS and it was a disturbance over there, uh, one of the vagrants. Can you give us a rundown of what happened? Well, they ends up to be one of our local drunks. We wanted to just talk with him and I wanted to make sure I had my um, my partner here learn how to interact with people like this. Okay, so you said he's one of the local drunks. You already know him. Yeah. The person that you guys encountered is someone that pretty much comes to go between here and Overtown. Right. So you guys issued a trespass warning on him, right? Trespass warning. And with this warning, we could tell an individual, you're no longer welcome here and that if you do come back, they're subject to an arrest. How does the trespass arrest work for a person that's, you know, encountering an officer for the first time? Before the trespass arrest happens, you have to give a trespass warning. You will have a sign that will give you the authority because now you are an extension of the owner or that business or that property to issue out that trespass warning. So depending on how the laws are in your area, that governs the way an right. officer will make that trespass right. arrest. Right. First, we give the warning, and if the person comes back, then they're gonna have that arrest. Right. So, as a beat officer, you have the ability to get closer to the business owners, to the locals, the people that live there, right. and really understand the issues of the community that you're serving. But aside from that, you're also an FTO, a field training officer. Right. You're able to now spend more quality time with new recruits that have gone through the academy, graduated, and are out here on the street. True. They come out for four months with the FTOs, 
different sections, different areas, different times. And this is to ensure that what they learn in the academy get put out in good fashion and form out on the street. So the new officers that come out of the academy, they get to ride with an FTO. And it's, it's great because you have 19 years of experience. Yes. So all that experience that Officer Frazier has you know, generated throughout the years and in his life, he's able to give that back to the new officers and help guide them the right way with the right mindset that an officer needs to have to do their job professionally and properly. Right. Now I notice you have you have the pin here for FTO for field training officer. Right. But you got also you have another pin over here. Can right. you tell me about that? Uh, this pin is pretty much my pride and joy is 14 years in United States Marine Corps. All right, 14 years US Marines. We have a lot of officers that are military. Right. And you know, it's it's a great career and it's great to have, you know, members of the armed forces that come out with us. Much love, much respect for you guys. Thank you. And Appreciate thank you for your service. All right. Do. Now, the main man over here. All right, Officer Carr. Introduce yourself to the 15s, the viewers watching. How you doing guys? My name is Officer Kerr from Pac 124. So this is my third month of FTO training, actually my first day. So this is your third month of FTO. Your first two months, what does the officer have to focus on to get through those two months? So we're just basically like an observer. We're seeing how police work is done. Um, training and just learning every single day how you handle the calls and doing traffic stops and investigations and interviews. Mm -hmm. And you're riding as a passenger then during those as two months. As a passenger. Now, this is your third month, you get to jump in the front seat. I'll be doing all the driving. So now he gets to drive as well. So it's, it's a process. You have to start off by observing, get to know the reports, and then you get to start to drive with an officer monitoring your driving skills to make sure that you're not breaking any traffic laws or that you're driving the right way. And I'll be handling all the calls by myself. By and if I need any help, then the FTO officer is going to jump in and, and help. He's on his third month. The fourth right. month is a little different now. Fourth month is a little different. Mm -hmm. So the fourth month, it's, it consists of basically like a hands-off role hands that, that the FTO takes. Everything they do on their own, uh, from the radio to the reports to the contact to traffic stops, everything will be on them. We're just there as an emergency backup. Since he's a beat officer, it's great that he's able to show a new recruit how to properly engage with the businesses. Park and walks are one of the things that beat officers right. do. I know when I was in Coconut Grove, I used to do that all the time. It's a great way to really get to know the people that you're serving. Since he's also a beat officer, he's not checked into service to be on call. On call, right. So he's able to spend a little more quality time engaging with the community. So they're gonna go do a park and walk, introduce the new officer to some of the businesses, get the officer acquainted to knowing how it feels like to interact with the public on a professional basis as a police officer. True, just show your face in the place. Come on. I got a new guy, so I'm just showing him around, just walking from store to store to store. Introduce yourself, officer. I'm sir, my name is Officer Carroll. I'll be with him for the next month. For the next month. All right, everything good though? Yeah. No problems? No, no. Right now he's okay. He's not coming right. Thank you. All right, five. All right, good. And this is where you learn. You see how it goes one here, one there, one here, one there? So they can't grab all and pull it out. So because you're with the businesses so much, you learn what, what they do for preventions themselves. Like I know what you're thinking. This is this is one of my store daughters, if you want to say that. And that's the store mom. This is one of the other managers here. Hey, that's dad. He's, he takes good care of us. You know, he's a store dad? Yeah. Because he, you didn't need soda. He guides us. I mean, whatever you need soda. He's there. He's like the dad. I mean, whatever question we have, that's who we can turn to. We know we can get the, the right answer. He's pretty good at guiding us in the right direction in every perspective of guiding us around the direction. And we're so happy to have him. While we're on the parking walk, it looks like one of the officers in the area just made a traffic stop. So, Officer Miller. Yes. We noticed you did a traffic stop. Yes. 
What was the violation? Why did you stop this lady? Because she was driving on the wrong side of the roadway and she came here to pick up a friend from out of the shopping plaza and she created a violation and that's the reason why I'm giving her a ticket. So she was going against traffic? Yes. Oh wow, that's not good. Definitely, she could have caused a head-on accident. And what's your role here in Upper East Side? I'm a PSC officer. PSC officers are problem-solving teams mm -hmm. and they want to address the issues of the area. Traffic in the plaza is an issue. People run the stop signs, they also break into cars. Correct. You will see the PSC officers out here along with beat officers and sometimes the NROs as well doing some traffic enforcement to help alleviate the congestion and help enforce proper driving habits that some of the citizens do not adhere to. Correct. All right, so since Officer Kara is on FTO still, right. there's only two seats in that car. There's three officers here. Can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm going to be following in my car behind them, and we'll be keeping you guys updated as they get the calls. Slow down, slow down. Do you see where the bin is? Yeah. See if that bin matches this bin here. Yeah, matches. Okay. License is good. Valid license. When you're up there, develop a report. Because you're coming out there looking like a robot. You don't need to be a robot. On the computer show space, that's clearly silver. That's your PC. But you let them know, you, you talk to them. You go from the tour, you get to go. Now, this call came out as check on the well being of a 90 year old female who hasn't been seen for two weeks. Fire rescue was called out initially. They did a forced entry, and unfortunately, they found the woman deceased. So she's been in there approximately for two weeks, deceased. The officer now has to conduct an investigation, go inside, check the scene, and gather as much information as he possibly can to determine whether or not this is a natural death or if there's foul play involved. Hey, how you doing, guys? Uh, I'm Officer Bob. Pretty much, this call was uh, neighbors were concerned about uh, a citizen that lives on their block. Um, one of the neighbors tried to bring her some food and some waters, you know, to take care of her. And they noticed they foul odor coming from the house, a lot of flies coming in and out. We had rescue come and we made entry to the house where unfortunately she was found deceased. And, um, you know, we're just working it from here. Fire rescue came out, homicide was notified. This is an unclassified death, so what's the process now? Try to get in contact with any doctors that she had previously uh, gone and visited, see if there's any, you know, health issues or anything that we need to be aware of. Um, notify a next of kin, see if they have any funeral arrangements or anything of that nature. Let the ME's office come now and they do their examinations and see what results they come up with. This is uh, the part of police where it's very sad dealing with any kind of death. Um, it's very hard on the family, so I'm going to let you go ahead and continue um, handling the scene. I know this is going to be a long, drawn out process because you got to wait for all these uh, notifications to go through, especially for the ME to come out. So I'll let you be, I'll let you do your thing. Have a good one. Thank you. Alright guys, so we are still on the scene of this call. Crime scene showed up. They're in the middle of processing the scene right now. So let me ask you a question. I see you have this blue outfit on. Why do you have this outfit on? Uh, for precaution, protection. Protection from what? Just a decomp. Oh boy. Yeah. So the body's totally decomposing now? Yes. So you gotta wear, make sure there's no oh, blood yeah. or anything. Oh, oh yeah. boy. You gotta okay. be suited up. They have to suit up with their PPE gear because it is a decomp. The body's been there for over a week, so they don't want to get any blood on their body, so they have to wear the protection. Right now, since we're still on scene waiting for the ME to show up, I'm going to show you guys Officer Frazier's car. The SUV he's riding is a little bit different from the regular SUV that the other FTOs use. So, it has the cameras on top right. that do the, the reading of the license plates. There's a special name for this type of car that you're driving, right? It is called an LPR, standing for license plate reader. On top of the car, you'll see four cameras, which could work day or nighttime. I know that it's really quick, because I remember 
a couple of years ago, I actually was in one of them, and you know, right. they pick up every single car that's going through. It's just automatically scanning the license plate. So if it, if a stolen vehicle pops up, that's like instantaneous notification right there. Yep, yeah, in less than a couple of seconds, we'll let you know. Yeah, it's really fast. But there's another feature you guys have on this car. You got a bunch of antennas sticking up. Right, we have four antennas. And what those antennas are for is low jack. It's a piece of equipment that goes into vehicles installed by the company itself. And if that particular vehicle and or motorcycle or boat is stolen, it will activate. It will go through a central location as far as the information and it will kick back the information for that particular vehicle. So I know that uh, when you're driving, it, it, it'll alert you if there's a stolen vehicle nearby or stolen boat nearby. It actually talks to you. What do you mean, it talks to you? Like it talks to you. Um, each box or equipment inside that vehicle, it has a special code. And if it picks up on that signal, it will say low jack alert, code, whatever that code might be, reference a stolen vehicle. You just have to listen to it and it talks just to you Just listen to up. it and it does all the work for you. On the equipment that we have on the inside, mm -hmm. as you will see, it has a circle. And based on the four antennas, whoever's receiving that signal mm -hmm. the best, it will literally tell you what direction, point an arrow, according to where the vehicle might be and the signal strength, which tells you how close you are to that vehicle. And this is the box here? Right, the box is a small little box. Right now it's scanning. This is the circle that I wanted to show you. And based on that circle, it will show me what direction it might be going to. And this is the signal strength. And that would tell me exactly how close I am to that particular vehicle. So what kind of lights do you have set up in here? Well, like most cars, we have the regular blue and red lights, but unlike most cars, the lights in here are internal. They're all internal within the top portion of the visor, the lower portion of the dashboard, and within the side and back. So it's a low profile type of a patrol vehicle, but it serves a purpose because we want the cameras not to be obstructed by the flashing strobes. Now this SUV, does it have the, the cage and everything? If it you has cage, it has everything for a regular patrol car. Nothing different, a little bit more room than normal. And it has the bars for the windows. And you have a protection for yourself as well so nobody can spit. Right, also as you can see, you have little sliding partition there so we could talk to people that are acting proper. Another piece of equipment that we have besides my vest is what we call the AED. The AED is a defibrillator, automatic defibrillator. You use this if somebody's heart has stopped or has just stopped. So tell me, this you have to take a four-hour class for this, right? I have to take a four-hour class, CPR class, which incorporates the AED. And with the use of this, properly used, you can save somebody's life on or off the job. Now, I've never used one of those. Right. Um, this is actually the first time I've seen it up close. Does it have easy-to-use instructions? Or if, if anybody, let's say, if, if, if you're an officer yourself that has a heart attack and another officer shows up on scene, will the other officer be able to open it up and use it without having taken the course? You could use it without taking the course. The course is just basically so that you could use it in an emergency basis. But when you open it up, as you, you'll see, it actually talks to you and tells you what to do step by step in layman terms. Wow, awesome. Let's see. I want to hear this thing talk to me. Okay, as, as I show you, it's very easy. All you do is flip it on the side, open the two tabs here, lift it up, and lift up this one lid, and it starts talking to you. Tear open package and remove pads. This is the pad right here. Tear open package and remove pads. Peel one pad from plastic liner. Which is this. Peel one pad from plastic liner. Peel one pad from plastic liner. And with this, of course, we're not going to pull Peel pad. one pad from plastic you liner. You put this on a person's body in two different Peel places. Peel one pad from plastic and liner. And from there, it'll tell you whether it's... Peel one is able to shock the person or not and what's going on and if it's shock it it does it on its own if not you continue cpr until it tells you the shock or until fire rescue comes and takes over with better more advanced equipment wow
right, so we're backing up Reeside. That last call took a long time. It's an important call that an officer needs to experience, especially on the FTO phase. Right. It was important to show the officer the proper way to deal with a death. This one appears to be natural. Things that you have to be aware of. Did she have medical problems? Uh, when was the last time she was seen? Um, the condition of the house, the condition of her at the time. It's not just the procedures and the paperwork, but it's also the respect to, to the right. person that, that's deceased. That's the part of police work that you have to be the most sensitive to because it's you're dealing with you know someone's loved one. Earlier in the shift, you guys took a traffic stop, you stopped the car, and what was the reason for the PC? I'm gonna let Officer Kara go ahead and answer that one. We ran the tag, it came back as a beige Chevy, and the vehicle was a silver Chevy. So, so that was already our PC. Okay, now stop. some of you guys might be wondering what's you know what's wrong with that. Sometimes people paint the car, they don't change the registration mm -hmm. with the color. That doesn't mean anything. But in reality, it is an area for concern for police work because an officer might be stumbling on a stolen vehicle. Sometimes people will steal a car and have a tag that's similar. Same type of make and model of the car and the year could be within the same model. 2016 might have the same model as the 15. So they'll steal a car similar to what they have as the tag and put the good tag on the stolen car so that it'll fool the officer. Correct, so that was our main concern. When it came back as a beige Chevy and we look at, at the car and it's a silver Chevy. So that was our main concern. So. Once they actually conducted the investigation, they checked the VIN numbers out, and it came out okay. It was a long night here, stuck on one call, but that's part of police work. Yeah. Sometimes you're here for a long time on one call, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's the way it is. Officer Frazier, let me ask you, the main thing that the FTO officer is trying to build up is their confidence, right? Confidence is key. Confidence and the on-the-job training is key to making it from day one from academy to the very last day when you do your final goodbye and you retire. Exactly. So for you new recruits, you guys that are in the academy right now, you're never going to feel 100% confident if you don't know your job. So you got to know your laws and you got to know how you stand as an officer. Be fit, be ready for anything, and use your brain. And as I always tell my rookies, you make the badge, don't let the badge make you. That's it. So with that being said, as always guys, don't forget to like. Wait a second, I can't let you guys go like that. It's Saturday and I'm over here editing in the morning, enjoying my cup of coffee, and I realized I forgot to give you guys a very, very important and special announcement. You might be wondering, where's Nick? Well, Nick's on paternity leave. He's gonna have a little baby. Congratulations, brother. I hope your baby comes out as beautiful as mine. I'm gonna show you guys my child. She's my little bundle of joy. Yeah, I'm just kidding, I don't really have a kid. Got a little fur baby over here though. So Nick, I wish you and the missus a very, very safe and good delivery. See you when you get back, brother. Enjoy your paternity leave. Much love to the family. Now back to the vlog. Share and, and subscribe. subscribe. Have a good one.